back out here live once again in aquaponics paradise bringing you to fire what we're doing we're going back to the basics ladies and gentlemen once again today what we're going to be talking about the five components of an aquaponic system the five required components for a basic aquaponic system the five required components of a basic aquaponic system that's what I'm going to be breaking down for you today so you can understand exactly what you need when it's time to get started so you can get growing. Now, when I say the five required components of a basic aquaponic system, I'm talking about the main grow, growing component of your aquaponic system. I'm not talking about the entire operation. We're just talking about the thing to get it started, what you need to produce your, uh, your vegetables. So let's get that understood now. Later on in other videos, we'll talk about what's required for the entire operation to get your stuff running efficiently. All right, so let's get it down and let's break it down right now. So from the five required components, what we're gonna start with is the infamous fish tank. The fish tank, this is component number one, the fish tank. Now, when your fish tanks, obviously this is the place where the fish dwell, this is where they're going to grow out. This is where they're going to live their life. Now, what I recommend for a fish tank, I recommend using aquariums or round tanks. All right. Now, aquariums here, we have it right here. This is an aquarium tank here. And then we also have the round tanks right here. Now, both of these work absolutely phenomenal, ladies and gentlemen phenomenal now let's get one thing clear right now when I'm talking about the round tanks I'm not talking about Intex pools and Walmart pools that's not what I'm talking about you cannot cut corners in aquaponics there's a price to pay for that when I say round tanks I'm referring to fiberglass tanks or polyethylene tanks that's what I'm talking about so let's go ahead and get that understood right now so I don't want you guys going out buying round tanks from Walmart because it will bite your behind in the uh, it will bite you uh, in the behind later on as you continue growing your fish, especially when you start increasing your stocking density and start putting more fish in there. So let's get that understood right now. Now the next component that we're going to talk about is the solids filter. The solids filter. Now obviously, once you're feeding your fish. They're gonna be producing all types of solid waste. And what we need to do is, we need to capture that solid waste and get it up out of the system. Because if not, it's gonna cause problems, especially in higher uh, uh, density systems. That's when it's gonna cause a lot of problems. So what we're gonna do is, what you have is, you have a few options to use for your solids filter. Let's break that down right quick. Let's talk about the drum filter. And you guys can look these up. I might do a, a separate video on these to go in depth, more in depth on the filter. But as of now, you can go and check it out and look exactly um, and look up all the filters that I named so you can get an understanding uh, of what exactly it is. So we got a drum filter. We can use a radial flow filter. Boom. We can use that. We can also use a swirl filter. And these two are very similar, but they have their differences. But you can use a swirl filter and a radio flow filter. And these are common. These two are very common, especially in like backyard systems, because you can build them. You can kind of put them together yourself. And, uh, they, they, you know, you can make them work somewhat decently. But this is what you have. Also, what do you have? You have B filters. B filters, phenomenal filters. And also you have media beds. You have media bed filters. These are your pretty much your main options. Are there other options? Absolutely, there are other options, but this is what we're pretty much predominantly going to be using in aquaponics. All right. So if you, depending on the filter that you use here, you might need something to take care of the finer solids that are going to accumulate. If you're using a drum filter, radio flow filter, a swirl filter, or a media bed. Most likely you're gonna need something to take care of the finer solids that accumulate. These will remove the larger solids, but they will not take care of the fine solids. The bead filter will. The bead filter will. 
up to a certain extent the bead filter will but the drum filter radio flow and all these other ones they're going to require a smaller a separate phase included in your uh solids filter like bird netting that's what uh, uh, i used to use some bird netting um that's just something that can remove the fine solids to get them out of the system now with that being said let's keep it pushing and move to the next portion the next component component number three and this is your bio filtration biological filtration now what happens why you need biological filtration let me put it right here this is the biological filtration so you're going to have bacteria that are going to be involved in the biological filtration or the biological filter this is from the accumulation of ammonia when you're feeding your fish the fish are going to excrete ammonia primarily through the gills and that ammonia is going to accumulate in the system also through microbial uh, processes they're going to um, produce ammonia as well and we have to do something with that so there's bacteria that develop when we put together a biological filter there's bacteria nitrous ammonis and nitrobacter they come through and they convert the ammonia into nitrite and then it gets converted into nitrate which is a usable form of nitrogen uh, for uh, the plants so what you can use here for your biofilter, you can use MBBRs. Those are moving bed biological reactors. Uh, you can use trickle filters. The trickle filter. You can also use the bead filter. And also you can use the media bed. Your media bed is going to act... Uh, the media bed is going to act as a biofilter. Now, what else do we, what also do we notice here? We notice that we have bead filter here in biological filtration, and also bead filter here in solids filter. We also have the media bed here in the biological filtration, and we have it here also in the solids filter. That means that means we can combine these. These can be put together in one unit. You see that? So your bead filter is both a solids filter and a biological filtration. Your media bed is also a solids filter and a biological filter as well. So you can combine them both together and get the two for one special, the two for one McRib special or whatever special is out there, you can get it right now for the price of one, all right? So this works out hefty and works out pretty fine when you're trying to consolidate your components and save room and conserve uh, space and energy. All right, now from there, what do we have? Boom, let's bring it over here. Ah, we have the hydroponics. That's the hydroponic subunit. Now, obviously in here, what we're going to be doing is this is where we're going to be raising our vegetables. Let's see if I can get some good vegetables in here. We're going to be raising our vegetables in these subunits here. Boom. What options do we have for the hydroponic subunit? Well, we have a variety of options depending on the needs of your system or the needs of your uh, 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 your needs or whatever you're trying to do with your aquaponic system. So what can we use? Boom. NFT, nutrient film technique. Infamous. Works very well. What else do we got? Boom. Floating raft. Woo. What do we got? Right here behind me. You see it. Floating raft. What else do we got? media beds boom what else do we got we can go vertical we're just not limited to being horizontal vertical we can go vertical with this boy boom what else do we got dutch buckets ah boom dutch buckets boom like i said depending on the type of crop you're going to be growing the intent of your operation is going to uh, uh, determine what you're going to be using for the hydroponic subunit here. Now let's bring it back to the biological filtration. I just remembered something. I just remembered something. Boom, what else do we have? The floating raft. It's also a biological filter. On the underside of the polystyrene foam, it has a lot of surface area for biological activity to take place. 
So underneath there, it's gonna be nitrifying bacteria that are doing what? Converting your ammonia to the nitrite and then to your nitrate. The nitrate is then used by the plants. Now the nitrates, let's get it clear right now, nitrate is one of the nutrients required. One, of the, one out of the 16 nutrients required for plant development. Aquaponics is just not converting ammonia to nitrite to nitrate and then the plants are just growing off a of nitrate. That's not how it works. That's one out of the 16. It's a macro a macronutrient needed in large quantities for plant development. So that is what we get out of this biological filter. All right. So the floating raft, the floating raft is a biological filter. All right. So let's get back to where we're at. We're at the hydroponics component. We went through an NFT floating raft, media bed, vertical, Dutch buckets. Now, our last component, let me get another color. Boom, let's bring out, where you at, where you at? I don't know where my other color went. All right, we'll bring out the blue. We'll bring this thing back out. Boom, our last component here is the sump tank. The sump tank, also known as a reservoir. Now, a reservoir, what does that do? Sound, what does it sound like? Reserve, what are we reserving in there? Water, this is where we're storing water and replenishing water, right in the sump tank. You're refilling your, your, your system. This is gonna ensure that your system is not gonna run dry, your sump tank. And what you wanna do is, you don't wanna have the sump tank combined with the fish tank. That's what some people do. They combine the sump tank with the fish tank. You can do that, but you're not, your, your, your system's not gonna be as versatile as if you just have it alone. It's a lot of things you can do with your sump tank when you have it alone. This is a place where we add our, um, our, our basin here in order to raise the pH, because in the aquaponic system, due to the biological activity, the nitrification process, the pH begins to drop. When the pH begins to drop, we need to add it um, base in there in order to add it or to increase it back up to a, um, a, 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 a point where it's suitable for the fish and the plants. So we raise the pH up in here, we add our base in here, we also replenish our water in here. That's where it goes down. There's also other things that we can do with a sump tank when you have a external sump tank, but I'm not gonna go into to it right now because we're at the basics right now. That's what we're talking about. So the sump tank is the last component for your system. Also, this is where your pump is gonna be at. Boom, let me put the water pump in here. Your water pump, which is gonna go ahead and distribute the nutrients to these various uh, components. That's, good. That's what's gonna happen with that water pump here. That's gonna uh, distribute it through all the various components and things are gonna return back to the sump tank. Now the sump tank is the lowest point in the system. This is the lowest point in the system and that's how you wanna make sure that you have it. You can put these things underground or you can put them above ground depending on how you design your system. It all depends, it's all relative. So once again, the five required components of a basic aquaponic system. Did the aquaponic guy forget something? I think so. Let's go back to this hydroponic um, component real quick. Boom, what do we notice here? We notice that we also have media beds in here. Media bed is included in there. So that means, boom, we can bring all these three components and we can combine them together. Now, while we can do that, Nature has a rude awakening for you, for you try to cut corners. So you can do this with a media bed and it can work, but you have severe limitations when you use a media bed. So although you can use all, or you can combine three components together, you're severe, you're, you are limited. You're limited to the amount of fish that you can grow. Your solids filter is limited. You cannot um, load this thing with a bunch of solids. Media beds do not work that way. It doesn't work that well. Biological filtration works uh, pretty well, but also you're gonna you might have problems in here with denitrification, depending on how well you maintain your system. So, the media bed, I would give it C grades for each one of these. It's not a great solids filter. It's, it, it it could be a decent biological filter, and it's not the greatest hydroponics uh, subunit as well. It works pretty decent though, but you can use it and still you get all three of them. You can get all three of them in there. So that is something that is a benefit of using a media bed. Boom, once again, let's break it down. The five required components of a basic aquaponic system, fish tank, where you grow your fish, solids filters, 
you remove and you capture and remove uh, large and fine solids, biological filtration, you convert that toxic ammonia into the less toxic uh, a, a version of nitrogen known as nitrate. Boom, you have your hydroponics component where you grow, actually grow your uh, vegetables. And then you have your sump tank, which is the place where you can add, you replenish your water and the place where you put your pump in and your nutrients in to go ahead and raise the pH, your pump in there to go ahead and distribute the water and nutrients throughout the various components in the system. Boom, this is a basic aquaponic system, the required components. This is what you need, ladies and gentlemen. Don't get it twisted. This is aquaponics, I'm pumped. Vegetables are growing, fish are growing. Woo, I'm excited. You should be excited. Get this thing going, put your system together. Follow the fundamentals, don't deviate, stop playing games, and you'll be out there growing, and you'll get your vegetables in, and you'll be out there growing, and you'll have a ton of fun with it. All of you guys can do it. This is something that is easy, especially I'm laying out a little a guideline for you guys, something easy to do. Let's just follow the blueprint, and let's get growing. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, reminding you to stop walking, and get you a car.